Hello, my name is Malik Abazdab. Welcome to the Christmas edition of PM Express. In the beginning of the year, there was fear and anxiety. The reason is simple. We were heading towards elections. And usually, our elections are characterized by violence. Many were those who felt that these elections would not pass off peacefully. But beyond the elections, there were many, many incidents of security challenges in the country. To, today with me are two gentlemen who have all the answers in response to the issues that came about. They will give us a history of all of them and tell us whether those issues were properly handled. You're watching PM Express. Stay tuned. We will be back. Welcome back on PM Express. Today we are talking about security. What are those security events and activities that happened in the year 2016? How did they impact our lives? How did we as a country respond to these challenges? With me are two gentlemen. They have all the answers. I'm talking about Dr. Franklin Bailey. He's a security analyst. Doc, welcome to PM Thank Express. You. And of course, our own Captain Budu Kumsin. Uh, I was with him here before, after the elections. I was with him here. He has been with us. Captain, welcome. Thank you. Let me start with you, Captain. The elections are over. Mm -hmm. what's, what's, what's your preliminary assessment of what the security was in terms of the main elections and immediately after the elections? Well, uh, let me, good evening to all our listeners and uh, uh, a Merry Christmas to everybody. And unfortunately, we have to be hauled here to come and discuss. <laughs> for, for, forgive Aisha and I for, for that. <laughs> part of, this is part of the Christmas yeah. program. Mm. And it's a pleasure. It's a service to the state. That's, That's right. You know. um, let us start with what was the situation before and how did we fare? You know, there were heightened anxieties, like you said. In fact, there were a lot of fears. So, you know, there were so many prayers and prayers and prayers. God should intervene. And the old man was getting a bit tired with that. <laughs> and then, yes, I mean, the police and the security agencies also had to step in. Yeah. And everybody threw his hat into the ring, in the sense that the civil society organizations also came in, the churches, the peace council, everybody. I mean, we realized we could sleep. It was a big industry. It, yes, it was a big industry, and it, rightly so. We, we realized we could sleep because temperatures in elections had been heightening. If I would say 28 2008, it was bad. I remember one that evening, midnight, I had to go and uh, uh, TV Africa, and I made this my famous call, where is leadership in Ghana? Mm. When at midnight, people had masked up in front of the EC. Yes, 2008. Yeah, so yes. 2000, that was 2000. Okay. Was it 2008? 2008. 2008. 2008. Because masked I, I up and the people that. who had caused them to mask up had vanished because they couldn't control the crowds. And the poor policemen, these are my children, mm -hmm. their age, well, I just left just about a few policemen with one or two or more cars. If one shot had gone off out of fear, there would have been mayhem. They would have butchered the, the, the policemen there, right? So it was heightening, and then came the 20, uh, 2012. 2012, and the thing had to go to court, and, and passions were building. And from 2012 to 2016, it was like constant election year. The temperature never dropped. Mm -hmm. The temperature, in fact, the court itself took us about a whole year. Mm. Yeah. Right. And it from was... there, the temperature never dropped. So we then it became like elections are won or lost at the polling the station. Stations. So there was no recourse to court. Yeah. So it was a do and die at the polling mm -hmm. station. And so tensions were building. Pressures were building. Some people had been in, the, in opposition for eight years. If they are not careful, they will be in opposition for 12, 12, years. 12 years. Some people wanted another more year. Would you put the others in 12 years? You know, it, it was like a do or die. And uh, those of us not in the industry, could, industry couldn't even understand why they were behaving that way. But I, I know, I, I can imagine it's not easy to be in opposition. <laughs> Doc, and, and so, um, sorry, and so the, the, the pressures were building and the fears were building. And luckily, we, we, we actually 
fell back on our good old Ghanaian character. We are hospitable people. We are not, basically, we are not a violent people. And we pulled through it, and I think God was on our side. Doc, do you think that all this anxiety and fears were misplaced, given that the elections just passed off peacefully? Well, against background of what, uh, let me also use the opportunity to thank uh, our world wishes on who will listen to our programs most of the time. Just like my brother, Captain, was commenting, let me take it from one angle and arrive at where you're talking about. Like the subject of uh, the development of tension that was rising as a result of the statement made by the Supreme Court, court uh, judges, most especially. A statement is by itself there, but the way you package it and present it can also result to, you know, tensions. Like we said, court said, indeed, elections are not won at the court. If you remember, you were covering, if you remember very carefully and you watch the countenance of the judge in presenting that statement, you can deduce and read what it means, even though that's what he has to say. Yeah. You know, but then, so that alone, the way and the manner you read the meaning to it is different from that. So it becomes something like, ooh, like you said, then nobody's going to go to court. But in another way around, you could have spoken in a way that would be, you know, I mean, is the tonation, the packaging also contributes. Now, coming back to the issue of whether it was misplaced in terms of what, and when we were preparing going towards the elections of uh, 2016, all that was going on was a sort of what, like he said earlier on, um, the governance, whereby the ruling government indeed will raise at the parliament issues they know very well that this is not going to be well with the people of Ghana. But because they have number, they'll have to what, just push it through. So it was built in. And then the opposition at that moment were also finding difficult because their numbers were not okay. But in actual sense, both parties really know that this is the matter which is not going to be good. So it continued to build from there and descend down to the people and has effect on the people. We are the people. We are suffering. We are going through the pain. And therefore, what can we do? We cannot do anything except the structure that has been made by the Constitution that we have to pass through. And at a point, those who are the stakeholders to ensure that apply these very constitutional mandates were also uh, paralyzing. And, and as a result of that paralysis, it was gradually peeling off, opening the way and the doors toward to, you know, this is what we saw towards the closer time of the election, whereby... Yes, and we'll deal with know, some of those incidents. Exactly. So that is exactly how I look at it. W were you surprised? Mm. You say you were surprised by how peacefully it all just happened? Or mm. you were expecting it to pass off the way it did? Well, it, 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 it passed peacefully because... Uh, the stakeholders, my take stakeholders, they, they play their part, which is supposed to be. And agree, we, we, the Kenyans have, you know, so much attached to the relationship with God. They re believe in God. And so prayer was also on the ground. Praying, people were both Muslims and the Christian community were also praying. However, the people of Ghana really don't desire to see blood. So everything, every individual could do in his own small way to ensure. But then... There were so many indicators that could have what easily spark off, triggered, triggered off the word, the conflict. There were so many things, and both sides were ready in so many things. That you think everybody was most part. Every, every, most, every. Captain, do you agree that both sides were ready? Oh sure, yeah, sure, sure. 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 But then to answer your question, were the anxieties and all these things misplaced? No, they actually these fears and anxieties in the system ensured the safety and the peace. Mm -hmm. of the state, which made parliament and all the stakeholders try to eliminate as many problems as possible mm -hmm. that could lead to confusion. confusion. Right? For instance, uh, anything that was one party suggested and another party didn't like, they discussed it and then there was a ruling. Okay. And so, uh, well, even the police, uh, the, the, the armed forces, somebody said we would deal with somebody and someone just doesn't lie in your mouth to say it. They immediately criticized it so that we put people at peace, at ease, that look, you won't see just see soldiers marching through the street, coming to, the, I mean, who invited you anyway? You know, so it, 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 the anxieties forced the parties to sit down and address every little bit of issue 
that, that could have spark been a, trigger, a problem. A problem. Exactly. So that they, they eliminated and eliminated and eliminated as much of the friction points as possible. Mm -hmm. And then both sides were also talking peace. Because we realized that, mm. you see, when one side is strong and one side is weak, that's where violence comes. Yeah. You remember during the height of the Cold War, they okay. had this mutual assurance. Assurance, yeah. This side had nuclear weapons. I had nuclear weapons. Both of us can fend, can can extinguish ourselves. Mm. Nobody wants to extinguish. So it was a cold peace. Mm -hmm. Right. So it, both sides now became so strong. Each side knew that. Look, I could face up to the, whether you had government forces or no government forces. We will we defend have, ourselves. Yeah. Okay. Before we deal with the specific mm. captain, at this point. Uh, the elections results have been declared. We all know what the results are. Mm -hmm. We know that a new government is coming into office. Usually when a new government is coming into office, the most important thing is security. Mm -hmm. Security of the government itself and security of the nation. What are those steps that are taking at this, by this time what is happening in terms of security, especially for the new government? And does the old government, the existing government play any role? Oh, sure. I think you are aware that we have this transition period. Yeah. And on the incoming government side, they have the head of transition. That is uh, Honorable Osaf Mafo. Mm -hmm. And the government side too has his head of Julius the transition Debra. team. Yeah. Is it Julius Debra or the foreign minister? For Tete. Te Hannah Hannah Tete. Tete. I think Hannah Tete is the head of the I think it's Julius Debra who is... Among uh, the two, I think one of... Hannah Tete, Tete is a spokesperson. spokesperson. That's right. right. Julius okay, Debra fine. is the That's head. right, representing okay. them. Thank you for the correction. So yeah. Julius Debra is also leading. And you see, the two sides have to speak and have to debrief and brief. That's right. The incoming should ask questions. The outgoing should also hand over. It's handing over, taking over. Mm. And I handing over, taking over. You, the one who had been the steward of this thing, will tell me as much as you can for the time you were in charge of it. And me, the one coming, should also ask as many questions as possible so that by the time I take over and you are gone, I will not stumble. If I mm -hmm. stumble and fall, the country stumbles and falls. So that is where the thing is. But then, to do this properly, it has to follow some good structure. Yeah. You know, for instance, the question you asked when the security, what would possibly be happening? You realize that the incoming team has uh, Kandapa. No, no, is it? Yeah, Kandapa, Kandapa aspect yes, of Kandapa the security is, yes, side. Yes. For instance, national security, the security agencies, the, the, the armed forces, interior, it all comes under state security, right? So Kandapa is the nominal head. He's in charge of that thing. But you realize that under him will be different branches. For instance, the armed forces is the armed forces. The police is the police. The security agencies, the B and I, the police, you know. So various branches. Under him, under him, he will need these departmental specialists who will also have to have technical people in there to ask the right questions. If Kandapa should go alone to face the head of BNI, he can't ask him all the questions that a former director of BNI will ask his counterpart. Yeah. Or he may not even understand the answers he will be given. Go into the armed forces. There was a politician who didn't even know the ranks, the ranks in the armed forces. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. he was coming in there. A, minister, a deputy <laughs> defense minister right. who you was said, being vetted and mm -hmm. he didn't know. So you need technical people exactly with the expertise in their specific fields exactly. to support the resort lighters, to ask the right questions so that we can take up our property. That is one. Two. How are these technical people even being selected? Is it Kandapa is the head? Oh, I know Ma, Ma, uh, Malik. That's time we, we, we were having a good one. Captain, we have to take a break. When we mm. come back, you will guide us as to how these selections are being made. I'll also be finding out from them um, when these decisions are being taken, what infrastructure, existing security infrastructure, should be left and what should be changed. You are watching Perm Express. We'll be back. Welcome back. You are watching PM Express and we are talking security today. How is the incoming government selecting its security team? What infrastructure should be left and what should be scrapped? Captain, you were telling us what the processes are in terms of choosing the security heads. What are the processes? The, you gave the, us one. You, you, no, I, I was talking about the, the, your, your, the incoming Yes, uh, for the team, incoming government. How yes. you select a good team okay. to go and jaw jaw with your counterpart so that you get a good understanding and a handle on the situation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, you're asking about how much of the old system should be left in place. Yes. Well, you see, we've had this situation in Ghana where 
this regime comes and then it clears the top layer. Everybody go. Police, the B and security agencies, the army, and you see, and one time I made a speech and I said, I asked, how deep is the supply of good material in these in these industries that you keep on creaming them off and creaming them off? It will get to a stage where you only have the no never never do wells in there who never hit the limelight and by sheer attraction at the top, they get to the top. And that's dangerous. Isn't that the problem of the way the people themselves conduct themselves? It, it, if a security official should conduct themselves impartially, should there be any problems keeping them? But yeah. if they, they conduct themselves so as, and I'm not saying that anybody has done that, mm. but if they conduct themselves as if they are protecting a certain regime, the next coming government should not be comfortable to keep them. Yes, that is part of the problem. If they themselves will allow themselves or behave in such a way that it is perceived in the public that no, this guy is not being neutral. He is protecting the regime, not the state. Then there is a problem already and you make it possible for someone to argue that you were politically colored. You were wearing political lenses. You understand? For okay. instance, uh, so that when I come, I have to do away with you. But again, it's the selection process. If the executive is so overbearing, so strong, and they have to come, and they themselves, and I remember, if you, it's the orientation of the forces that you give. If you orientate them to be regime preservation and not state preservation, mm. then any new regime that comes will take you off. Yeah. But if you program them in such a way that their efforts is geared towards state, the interest of the state, preservation, that if a big man, so called government, Ghana here, do you know I'm a big man? If a big man misbehaves, they will deal with him. Just the same way if a poor man misbehaves, too, they will deal with him. People will actually advocate and then this, clear them, clear them. Doc, I think have we'll, our we'll security minimize. agencies demonstrated that? Impartiality, uh, absolute one. Yes, I, I can say that, yes, because from what Captain is saying, I see that as far as the Constitution is concerned, the security agencies are meant to have their specifics and what and individual roles to complement the security structure of this country. Now, right now, I can see that from what he's saying, there's many time there's a new government. There's bound to be or a change of all these security chiefs, yes, the top chiefs, right? Yes. Which, under normal circumstances from the constitution, I see that it shouldn't be so. And that's where that means uh, the issue of loyalty as described by the constitution of a security to the government or to the constitution and the state is being misplaced because commander in chief of the armed forces fine then there were all the security agencies there's are chief supposed of to defense be staff there's or, igp you know, there's bni director very good national security Corps. all are supposed all to be loyal to but the loyalty here is where the question arises in terms of what let's take bni for example right would you say the BNI has conducted itself in a manner that preserves the state and therefore the top hierarchy should be kept? In fact, and, and when you look at the trend of the BNI role of recent, up to the time of uh, perhaps, let's cut it off to um, even the time of war, the time of... Um, MP and down to, you realize that so many petty, petty things you ask yourself, even an ordinary Kenyan who doesn't know much, will say, ah, now is it a police role that is the ABNI is undertaking or the role of the world of the BNI undertaken by the police? Mm -hmm. So there's a sort of a swap here. And what is the line, the thin line between the role and the responsibilities of the BNI and that of the world, of the police? There must be, and then and the same thing with what the state security, what uh, national security. These three, they must, they have different, different, different roles. Even though they are playing the same role of security, but they have thin lines of roles they have to play for the state. But today, some near, near, very tiny, unimaginable un, 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 un concerns, you see that they are in there. So a role that's supposed to be played by the police will be tackled by the. So there's a conflict of of, of powers you here. You think the BNI so has shifted from its core role? I, I I see it from that way of recent. Captain, so do you agree with him? I do agree. Uh, I do agree. We had the why? case of Yoko exactly. that jumped into something that had nothing to do, to with, do with the book. I, what you call was that uh, one of these podcasts? Is it Papa Yeah, PPP. Exactly. I I, I, pay, example. I pay for my my people and say Yoko is investigating. investigating him. What the hell? Who invited you? At what stage had that thing exactly. reached at all? 
so, you know, were you trying to assist his disqualification? Yes. What was the aim? Had anybody referred anything to you? You understand? So you, when you do that, people, the ordinary man on the street, those people we think are not in trade, they, are they the start people. seeing. Exactly. And funnily enough, we are all we have all been surprised by the ordinary man on the street mm. with this election. Yeah, this exactly. Election. With the, this election. The way so, they contribute, the way we analyze, we, we, we the way we think, we, 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 we have to be really careful. And I have also been telling some of our colleague, junior colleagues who are still in the system that yeah. to insulate yourself from that danger, mm -hmm. try just try to be professional. That's it. Just try to be be fair and firm. Be polite but firm. That's it. Fair, firm. But polite. Mm. Is yeah. that possible in our security setup, Captain and Doc? It's it's quite possible if indeed who the the, the ordinary man's tax has been used in training you. Are you telling me that these people have not been trained, have been taught these things? They have been taken to degrees professional training. But I tell you, when they come out, because uh, some of them are so much really focused on money or one thing or the or favoritism. Favor. Favoritism. They shift from their professional thought, the professional training and abuse. And at the end of the day, uh, that kind of situation will find itself, which is affecting the entire system. In fact, let me tell you something. I feel so sad when I travel. I traveled last year. I traveled to, I was part of this climate change conference. Mm -hmm. Okay. And we were there about uh, a week or two. And we had what? Uh, uh, solidarity, economy, climate change, and the BBB, something to do with security. I was in that team. We brainstormed. After that, we finished and we sent our, we took a train from Chamonix to, uh, to Paris. And the day of what, the opening of the, of the head of state, we were there to take up the decision. We left. I, we finished and we left. Now, if you look through from Amsterdam, we took flight to Switzerland. We drove from there. And the security, the, the border between Switzerland and uh, Paris, okay. there's a nice. very tight, like from here to the, to the, to the traffic light, okay. you'll be passing through security system. Go to Togo here. I came to Togo. I was in Togo to deliver a presentation in March this year. And I was walking through and I, I stood at a place and I saw the way our border and I said, what, what is this? And this, we caught, uh, we, we were secured. Now, Togo here. All the countries around here, go there and see the little, the security that they're among there. Here, what are we seeing? The freedom is too much, but the justice... We are too lax in our too security. Too much. The security system and our... Yet, when you tell them, oh, we are, we are at work, we are on top, we are on top. But I tell you, if tomorrow, we don't pray for Captain, it... Captain, you agree with him? Yes, that our yes, security you, is too you, lax. Yeah, you asked that yeah. question about, uh, can one be professional and fair and independent? <laughs> now say yes, if you want to. Really? Yes. And I can give you an example. So that I'll give you a neutral example that will not be of, give us any trouble. There is this police officer who was in charge of MTTU. Is that Alasa? Awuni. Awuni. Awuni is late. Yes. Late. yes. yes. Yeah. Awuni. Why did Awuni get that reputation? Yeah. Why did Awuni get that reputation? Captain, Isn't you should have spoken to him the personal inconvenience. Precisely. Fact, the delays in promotion. Precisely, but he was because a professional. Of professional. Yeah. Yes, and a but professional came at a great cost that, to him. A professional has that painful patience. That's right. It's called painful but patience. But why do we build a society yeah, where it costs it. a lot that is it. to so be professional? The, the, the weaker ones will buckle down and then start pandering but to Captain, the Captain, why do we build a society where it costs, it has to cost you personally yeah. but, to be professional? It, it, it's a process. We have to start talking to our so-called big men. That if you want your own safety, don't continue this thing. Look, Idi Amin, had the strongest army in East Africa. Yeah. But because in Uganda, he, in Uganda, Uganda. had the strongest army in, in, in East Africa. But because he was just sucking the professional, 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 professionals, a week I mean, is it Tanzania? So he just worked, went much through and de just de de defeated this country, Tanzania. which was a shame. Mm -hmm. Hitler was very strong. strong. He used to kill the good professional, Rommel, this, this, this. And what happened? The at the end of the day, he had bad advice mm -hmm. and he lost. He lost. So we, the so-called build men, put ourselves in a long-term danger if for short term we keep on just throwing out the good, good professionals ones, yeah. who make us uncomfortable. Then, of course, we experience what we have done. In fact, if you join the special forces, it, these are specialized small, small teams. Mm. They tell you, these so-called, if you are not a bit of a maverick or something, you may not even get there. Yeah. Each of them is a strong-headed, hard-headed mm. guy. Mm. 
right? And the people see them as rebels, but these are the fiercest and best fighting forces you will get. You have, they, they seem like they are rebels. They just need someone who will listen to them and see and their professionality. Exactly. And, and appreciate it. Exactly, exactly. So for our own long-term safety, our so-called big men should stop. Am I hearing you people recommend that the current gov the new government shouldn't just bundle everyone and throw them out? No. No, I wouldn't recommend it. I wouldn't recommend it because, you see, you clear everybody. To get a top flight not, intelligence not, agent mm, takes years mm. to, to, to cultivate, to create one operator. Now you come and you just sack them like that. How, how good is the, how deep is the supply of good material? That is the issue. How deep is the supply? So you get funny people who want to please the master, and the true intelligence they fear, so they will come and tell you what you want to hear. Doc, do you want to answer his yeah, question? How add, deep is add, the supply of good I, material? I want to add a little to what he said, because as, on the area of intelligence, which is very, it's very difficult, like you were saying, difficult. We are, have about what, seven different kinds of intelligent areas, as you may think. We don't just talk about intelligence. But I tell you, we have the word, the human intelligence. It's all within intelligence. But we have the people who have been sharpened and trained for human intelligence. We have the signal intelligence. We have the emergency intelligence. We have the measurement and signature intelligence. We have the open source intelligence. <coughs> we have the community intelligence. <coughs> and we have the mass intelligence. But all are in the security system. We have that as intelligence unit. But within it, they are so before you can really assume and polish and really get these people, it is not quite Somebody easy. who is multifaceted like this. You see? Yes, if you are overtly political, you should be taken off. Exactly. Fine. If you are overtly political, Very you well. should be taken off. How but, do we but determine this, that? Oh, uh, how do we determine that? That someone uh, is overtly uh, that, that, that is an area I don't want to go. <laughs> because I think you might have seen some yourself. You know, so this one. <laughs> I say, I'm telling you that the so-called ordinary man on the street has shown that he's very smart and discerning. Some of them have been overtly political. Mm. And definitely they must, they must know themselves and they might even be quaking in their seats. Exactly. They wouldn't, I don't, if I were one, I wouldn't wait to be told. You understand? But then if you are a professional, mm. even when they come and they say they are sacking you, you will salute and say, sir, but let me tell you, I did my job and I'm going away in clear conscience. That's Doctor, it. does it not worry you that Captain is able to pick out just one. And I think if you talk to the average Ghanaian, That's right. as to who is an upright policeman that people know mm. that he will not cower mm. to anyone. There was a police is officer that too. Traffic? Of course. No, there was we... this traffic police officer, some inspector, something or something. We had traffic police. When he died, the whole country, yeah, yeah. you know, I used to see him on the, the motorbike. motorbike. That's right. That's right. I mean, the whole country was, was sad. Really professional. He Very doesn't look, care about what people see. To make sure that he will do what is but required of him. It, it doesn't look like we have. A they are in a minority. Of them. They, they are, are yeah. not of them. But again, I think we need to also to consider. I think the time has come. These agencies, the conscience, the attitude. Apart from the training, we need to also have a moment of conscientization of the attitude. The attitude of these men also must be looked at. But again, it looks like the. Uh, the remuneration and the kind of uh, benefits or the, the social welfare or the welfare, I would say, the welfare of our security is, is also something that, you know, subject them to be also that way, going that way. As goes, Master, I don't buy that. Well, well, let me, uh, let, me, uh, let, me, uh, let, me uh, let me, let me, let me end. You see, when you look at the uh, issue of what, uh, the police, let me come to the police. People say, well, they always, no matter what you do, the police will, what, they will take something from one person or that. And again, when you look at what well, of recent, I think their salary has been a little bit what yeah. yes. manageable. Yeah. I, I would say than before, mm -hmm. you know. But still, they will still do what the society are complaining. Yes. So right now, I am talking about that. Yes, that's right. Attitude, the attitude now. Well, the attitude must well, be subject to scrutiny and change. Pep talk. You need to work on How the attitude. How can we do that? You but know. you see Captain, the direction. You see, at the end of the day, they report to civil authority. That's right. They report to the C and C, mm. and the tone should be set from there. And I, I, I'm glad that Nana started making the right noises mm. when the police went to greet him. I didn't watch it, but I heard it. I heard that it. he told them, just be professional. Mm. Don't look over your shoulder. Exactly. He said what it. does the big man want, or what does he want to just be just focused? Just be professional. Yeah. And if Nana continues that encouraging them to be professional, if my son misbehaves, catch him. 
punish him. I will come and bail him. Yeah. But for the few moments that he would have, he would have spent with you behind the counter and going to before I come and bail him, he was so traumatized. He won't mess up like that mm -hmm. again. Mm -hmm. I'll give you an answer. A very good of friend of mine. Uh, I wouldn't mention the name. He was a big man in Ghana. The daughter and the friends went to the, the nightclub, and they were coming home. And then they, 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 this police patrol, the Joint Military Police uh, Patrol, yeah. in front of the daddy's house, they stopped them, and she was rude. And actually, either insulted or even hit the, the, police man, the, the policeman or the soldier. But the, luckily for her, they knew the father. So they knocked the father word, and they said, this is what your daughter had done. We stopped her. This friend told the, 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 the security agent, thank you so much. Thank you for giving me the respect and not harming this girl. But in front of them, he chided his daughter and told them, if you ever did that again, I'll let them beat you in my presence, lock you up, and I'll come and bail you after three days. Mm -hmm. You see, when you do that, that you encourage them. Exactly. You motivate them to do the right thing. Yeah. Not shout at them as, what do you mean? What do you No, no, no. If my son or daughter misbehaves, I will deliberate. My daughter, my daughter called me once so frantically that the policeman has arrested me. He said, what did you do? do. He said, he says, I did a U-turn. Did you do a U-turn? He said, yes. <laughs> but I, did, I said, don't be rude. He said, I accompany him to the police station. I accompany him. They will book you. So that don't you want to do? I said, what would, should I, I'm, even if I were the IGP, what do you want what to do? So that they should take me. I said, yes. Just let me know which police station. That's what, you yeah. understand? Let the child know no. that you are subject to the law, whether your mm. father is the president That's or right. the prime minister. <laughs> this, I will, I will come and bail you, mm. but next time, whatever you did and they, they do, don't, don't pay the bribe, you go, go through the process. Yeah. I won't let you stay there. Mm. I can come and bail you. But to, hell, I mean, mm. you... To, okay. to, 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 to add to that, yeah. this example was given, is what also took place in well, Liberia here. The president, that's the lady's name. Uh, uh, Selif. Selif. Yes. Do you know he had two children? Who were in the ministerial position, and one was a, I don't know, I don't know the portfolio, but in the ministerial position, like one of finance or something. Like that. But they were misbehaving. They warned and warned, and then they sack him. Yeah. They sack him. The son. If the president can sack her yeah. son, then you be. So warned. who exactly? That's a typical example. So a time has come that most of the things that have been, well, you know, conducted in our society. Uh, you know, doctor, why mm. are the hierarchy, the top hierarchy mm. of the security services? Not telling their people, especially the police. We know that after the military, they don't really uh, come much, at people. Mm. Why are the top hierarchy of the police, IGP, all these commissioners, why don't they tell their people, go out there and force the law mm -hmm. and let anyone come? I don't know. Maybe one day you have to bring the IGP or the, to answer this question. Because the police spokesman. Because by the constitution of this country, yeah. that is what they are supposed to do. They are mandated to what? what apply the law that has been well established by the legislatures. The legislatures have really put this law and it's become a well, document. You, it's your duty to well, implement it. But sometimes it's so unfortunate, it's so disheartening <laughs> that we see that these things is really affecting this and that and that and it's no good for the society. And that person needs to be subject to punishment. Doctor, you wanted to say something? Yes, yes. Just I'll give you one or two examples. I understand during when Rollins was president, mm. he was passing through a checkpoint or something, and this guy didn't see him. Maybe he was not in his official car. Mm. And he came there, was actually misbehaving or talking nonsense, or maybe was asking something. Then he looked closely and saw Rollins. I said, Master, I sacked myself. <laughs> <laughs> again, again, I saw Peter Nantoma. Yeah. Uh, Peter Namfuri. Namfuri, yes, IGP. As IGP. Mm. In his mm. common shirt mm. like this. Tessano. Yeah. Stood there and got there and got to the police checkpoint, mm. and him, I heard him shouting at these police people, mm. "You are supposed to search the car, not just stop the car." Yeah. I heard him. You, the yeah. next time I went to his office, I said, "Master, give me five. Yeah, I remember he was story. my friend. Mm. You see, when you have he's from the top, in his village. yes, yeah. now he's uh, he's it done his time. From the now, top. When the like top has to mm. encourage them, and you see, I keep on saying, human beings have emotions. We are not light switches. Mm. God gave us our independent will. That's and right. we cultivate character over a long period of time. Mm. So you can't expect that now we change at once. No. But encourage us. And you will see the developmental signs. If Nana continues making this, the sort of noises he started making, just be professional. Mm -hmm. No favoritism. Mm -hmm. Just be good. Just, and maybe when he comes, God bless him, I wouldn't wish it on him. Mm. That one somebody close to him misbehaves. 
and he punished the person it publicly. It will send such shivers right. down people's uh, spines. Spine. It, it, you will see, Ghanaians are not too difficult to manage. No, no, no. We've done it in UT before. Yeah. It's possible. It is. Ghanaians are not too difficult to manage. Though. If you go outside, we are not too difficult. Okay, let's it's go. when we come here that we pretend that we are difficult. Let, let, but all is not uh, doom and gloom. Uh, we, we saw the security agencies act proactively, they would say, in picking up the South African three who had been brought in by the MPP mm. uh, and were in some village in the central, central region. region training uh, its party people. Yeah. And what's your assessment of the manner in which the BNI handled that case? Yeah, in fact, when you look at the whole thing, they brought him in, they have been in, they are doing what they, when you look at the process, they came at the airport, they were subject to scrutiny as any other person could be subject to. They declare what they have brought in, they give them receipt, they went into training. Apparently, from what I know, and I, that these people have been, this is not the first time of coming to, uh, to the country for similar thing. They have been there. Why didn't they or, or, you know, scrutinize them? And again, right from South Africa, they went to the embassy, they secured what? Visas. Visas. They were given. They were scrutinized. If anything at all, they could have been refused there not to come at all. No, but they said they, were, they needed the visa. They, they took business visas. Fine. Yeah. When they came into, at this point, visa given from there doesn't mean you are through. It can be what? Intercepted here, even when you arrive on the spot at the airport. When they look through and see your personality and assess you, they, we have the security men here, they can do that. And they can say, no, we cannot let you enter. It's not that when you take a visa, it means you have to run through. Fine. This time, they went through. They came. They went there. Why is they were there? And we're doing this. All the things that they show when we saw the list of what the items, they were not they were all non-lethal stuff. Had been declared. They've been declared and paid for. The BNI statement that was issued said they were being trained in weapon handling. No, no, no. But then what, what type of, what type what of what weapon? Are we about? It's not. So eventually With a taser? These are non-lethal. They are non-lethal equipment. I mean non our kids use this exactly. paint paint uh -huh. gun. You know, no, they're toy paint guns. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, well, not and then when I went there, but the point is that when they came out all these things and they finished, and at the point when the process, the, the other party realized that uh, mm, they were taking off the matters and you took them to court, okay, before the twinkle of eye, you sweep them out of the country. Why don't you allow them to go through the, war, the, the process of the law? So that's very area is where we need to look. Why well, didn't you? But well, it was well, it was a decision, Captain. Well, it was well, a decision well, to uh, don't if the people are a danger to security in the country. Why do you keep them? So uh, and, the Jitmo, and the Jitmo too are no danger to the country. <laughs> that's what that's going to be. Okay, let's so we will careful. talk about that. Let's be careful. But we, you see, it was it is a plus and a minus both for the BNI. Okay, they didn't pick up these people early enough, according to them. But then, police tries on information. Yeah. They, they didn't detect them themselves. Mm -hmm. People reported exactly. that we we'll see people doing fiscal training and then, then they went in. And that what I want to give them the credit. You pick up the information, you work on work the on information. It. So mm -hmm. they went in there and they said, uh -uh, this thing is like quasi, quasi military. Perhaps so we are not careful, we are not too comfortable. But I don't think they did too well. Sweeping in there was fine. Yeah. But did they do excellently well in the investigations? I don't think so. Okay. But maybe the ground was a bit soft. Exactly. But whatever it is, they were taken out. But we didn't have an iron clad I, case. Mm -hmm. I want us to take a break and when we come back, Captain will tell us why he thinks that we didn't have an iron clad case and why he does not think that there was even handedness in the handling of this case. You're watching PMF Express, we are talking security. Keep watching. Yeah, welcome back. You're watching PM Express. My guests are Dr. Franklin Baini and Captain Budukumsin. Captain, you were saying we didn't have an ironclad case. Why do you say that? Well, I'm not a lawyer. What I'm saying <laughs> is that maybe, maybe the ground on which they were standing, standing was, was soft. soft. That is why we didn't carry it. We heard the... that they had documents uh, referring to the STL, the company that did the transmission of results. I can go to Germany and start asking questions about the Chancellor. Nobody will arrest me for asking mm -hmm. questions about the Chancellor. What was so sensitive about the STL? Were they given a, 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 the chance even to defend themselves in court? No. You see, that's why I'm, I'm not saying they were not even handed. Did they carry this investigation, investigation. through to its logical yeah, conclusion exactly. so that the public, when we are told a decision, we say, yes. yes they will be satisfied. Did you feel satisfied mm -hmm. with the case, mm -hmm. the way it was terminated? You know, you, I don't think you did. Maybe I'm not pushing you to say yes or no. <laughs> but a lot of us were left high and, high high and hanging. 
So, so what? So what? So what? Do you understand? They should have taken their time. See, we have to be professional. So you so think right. it was a good job which was not concluded properly? Properly, That's yes. That's right. That, that, is, That's that right. is my opinion. I'm not a lawyer. I'm not a judge on the bench. But at least the basic it was a mm. good, good beginning that didn't end. Well. Was a, a story, story cut. Do you think there was politics in it? Yes. Yes, of course. I would say both. I think there was politics yeah, in it. No because... Both. The NDC was in power. Mm -hmm. These people, are, this, that training company was alleged to be aligned to the MPP, MPP. and, 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 and. So, of course. You Look, we also hear position. stories about things being imported into the country. Mm -hmm. Where did they land? Where, where was the BNI? We heard mm -hmm. about, uh, what was it? Kennedy and Japan mm -hmm. came on air mm -hmm. and actually made an accusation that sh shoulder held, well, friends, missiles had been exactly. imported, imported into the country, brandished papers on the screen, mm -hmm. that this thing, the, the end user certificate, did not come from Ministry of Defense or Interior, but from the Flagstaff House. He was not arrested. He wasn't challenged. Did the missiles if actually get If he had arrested him, the politician would have said, hey, our man no, hasn't picked that. that is a serious allegation. If I have a shoulder, shoulder launch missile, yes, you should see me as a very big threat to you. Exactly. I can bring down either an armored car, of bring down the president's plane, mm -hmm. bring down anything. Mm -hmm. Even with a gun, I'm dangerous. And how yeah. much more a missile launcher? You understand? Now we are, the, the case just died. This is why I say that why the professionalism the Why didn't the security agencies arrest him to provide further I don't know. This is what particulars. we are talking about. Is it because they feared to intervene? Or they didn't find merit in it? But or, either way... Would have been problematic, Doc. Why? Because if they didn't find merit in it, huh? it still would have been important, you just said, that they should pick him up, deal with it, and bring closure yeah. to it. So if you pick somebody, that doesn't mean lock him up. You can yeah. invite yeah, him. Yeah, that's, what, that's not what I'm saying. Always lock him up, lock him up. It would have been important that closure was brought yes. to the allegation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's hanging. Now it's up to the incoming government to, if he likes, the security people, to take, it to up, take up that. That's that right. If and I were ever involved in the incoming security, it is a big security thing hanging yeah. there. Yeah. I would want to find out, was that story true? Are those missiles in this country? Where did they land? Who has them? Who has is that them person them? going to use it against my government? I would tell you, nah, 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 let me follow this case. Exactly. But if it is in the wrong hands, it can be used against uh, the, 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 the Jubilee House exactly. or the Black Sabbath. At any time. Any time. I can right. bring down your plane. Mm -hmm. When you are flying, I'll bring you down. So we have to have closure. Too many cases are started. We don't get the results of the investigation. That is the, 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 the market fires. We even lots. brought in foreigners. Mm. We never heard anything. Nothing. This, the, 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 the minister who was uh, assassinated. Mm -hmm. Whoa, Nothing. Hoopla, hoopla, hoopla. That, MP. No, of, the MP who was MP. the MP. Yeah. 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 Yes. They, they started. We had funny stories. The police took, the BNI took over. The no mm -hmm. result. You see, we have but a The case is in court. It's Up in court. to now, we have not heard anything. Oh, there's what a, speed? There's a young man who is being. Well, uh, okay. If, I'm if we sorry. Have to take if guidance I'm sorry. from the late Professor Mills, the wheels of justice grind slowly. Please, not criminally slowly. <laughs> <laughs> they said democracy is expensive, expensive, but I said not criminally expensive. Don't give me that. Because it's expensive, you bring your nonsense inside. Don't give me that. Okay, since we don't know where the, the launches are, as claimed by uh, Kennedy Japan, Japan, let's ask where are the Gitmo 2? I suppose they're, they're in the country as what they alleged in the beginning that they're going to be here for two years. So if this, what is going by, then of course they are still in the country. Because they were meant to understand that they're going to be here for two years and they'll now deploy them to where they're supposed to go. However, their families are permitted to come and visit them and in and out from their home country. So if it's two years, then of course these Imotu are in Ghana today. Do you think that presented any security challenge or we were just doing politics? No, it's given all the it bro was. How to me it. it was a security deal because when you go back to read the background of these people, they are not the only people. They were people who were a security threat to America itself. We were kept there for a long period at the end of the day. They deployed them. Why didn't they send them back they to They were not home? found guilty of anything. Or Whether found dishes. guilty or not, as long as they have been brought in for interrogation, we are presuming that there was something that they saw that made them to bring them there and subject them to interrogation. Therefore, look, you, for example, when you, something minute goes wrong and they pick you. Look at recently what happened to this uh, your newsman at uh, 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 Oman. He went to immigration. He heard that they were doing recruitment recently. Mm -hmm. And he went there. And before they modeled him and kept him in a cell and stripped him. 
At the end of that the day, that is crude. It's very, very crude. Had, had At the end of the day, he did that nothing. That is not professionalism. It's the point. Now, it's a mark on him that he was, whether you like it or not, it becomes a mark. So, that kind of mark of good, did more to that mm, fact that they have been kept there, interrogated, and suspected and, to and be. At Guantanamo Bay. At Guantanamo in Bay, Cuba. you know, in Cuba there, it's that alone, you know, sends signal that, no, these people, they're dangerous or something like that. But however, why didn't they take them to their back to the home country? And they can pass in three years and go. And look at the kind of what, the kind of the process that it took which was also not clear to the people. It was the process well, it was, that it was, created. It was clear yeah, cut. It was, it was more because the process that created yeah, the anxiety the in, no, the, but in the, the But the government explained that this was not a treaty, and so it couldn't have gone to court, as the, uh, the opposition at the time was mm. insisting that this matter should have gone to parliament. Yeah. But the government said this is you not see, a it treaty. It isn't everything that is discussed that uh, comes into the open. Yeah. If the security committee or something had discussed it, right, you understand you wouldn't have this backlash from parliament. Mm. Sometimes there are a lot of security issues that are discussed that you and I, simple souls, will never get to hear. Mm. Not at all. That is how it should be. It's yeah. not everything that comes mm. into the public domain. Yeah. But the people sitting on those committees know that they have to be able to keep their mouth shut. That's right. So it isn't everything that comes to us. You see, and why did it create anxiety? If you know that we are simple people, and as for me, when I see... I used to call every bookkeeper accountant. Mm. Yeah, same people. Anybody who deals with ledgers will say accountant. Mm. But if you get inside, you know, some are bookkeepers, some are accountants, <laughs> some are this, different levels. So you know that we are simple people and we hear, when we hear terrorists, we are all running. Mm -hmm. And you are bringing some into You know that some who are done like that, we will hear. You know, so that's why you should have done your homework Good. with the professionals yeah. first mm. in the proper core courses so that it doesn't come from there. And then, you somehow, you have to manage our, 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 our feelings, our fears. That is why I am not the president. That's why you are qualified to sit there. You've got professionals to help you manage us. But then the way the thing came, I don't know even how, whether we heard it before the president told us or whatever. Well, it was an attacker who issued a statement yes. um, that, the, that the people that are here. The people were coming. Ah, By okay. that time, um, I think New York Times mm -hmm. had done the story already. Fox News. So you realize yes. that in this age of social media and instant information, yes. Fox you News. have to be proactive. Mm -hmm. You so have Fox to be News. proactive. Yes. It looks like here we are always in emergency mode, emergency meeting, emergency mode. Everything is too late. You, know, you have to be proactive because we heard it before you told us. Mm. Then the rumor mill starts being fed. And after the rumor mill, if it is 10, they will say 200. Mm -hmm. You understand? Before you now, you are now put on the defensive and you now have to come and react. If you are in the reactionary mode, you've lost the initiative. Captain, do you sincerely believe that the coming to Ghana of these two posed any security challenge? I don't think so. I, it is, we, we've known things, I, I suppose. You see, I still, me, I know so, a little bit of them. I still know that we've got good professionals in the system. Mm -hmm. At par to a lot of other agencies. Yeah. Look, when our boys go out, on operations. They perform. They perform. They perform. I'm telling you, I've done so many operations with the United Nations. Yes, if there are tricky operations, the UN starts attaching platoons and small units of Ghanaian Ghanaians. Ghanaians to other, other people's armies. Really? Yes. We are good. We, you see, but the thing is that so once we, we get sit in here, Ghana here, it is the environment. Your boss will not allow you to be your professional self. You why, have to hide part Captain, of your professionalism. Captain, why do we sit in Ghana here and all these disturbances, Bumpurugu people can fight and kill and burn homes for sometimes for years. It has to take our own set, Kwame Boatin, to go and do stories there for these people to later come together and say, okay, never again should these things happen. Where are, where are intelligence agencies? You see, when Boko Haram gave the Nigerian army a bloody nose, I said, serves you right. In fact, that thing was such a disgrace to all of us because the Nigerian army is supposed to be the biggest and strongest army in West Africa. So that if Ghana's small boy is getting a problem, you can call on Big Brother. Now if Big Brother himself is being beaten by some rascal in the bush, who are we going to call? Now you know why the Nigerian army suffered that humiliating thing? Because the, all the agencies, the security forces, were mal aligned. They were aligned looking in the opposite direction. And what is the opposite direction? It was on regime preservation. <laughs> not state preservation. Look, if you like, start planning to make a coup in Ghana here and see how fast you'll be caught. But why can't we filter out Bunkrugu nonsense? Why can't we start filtering out problems that are brewing? 
you had sometimes it, it amazes me. You heard about that Kumasi incident where this uh, the the the, the, the Zungu or something is it, where the, yes, the chief yes. was slapped. Oh, yes. Okay. It must have developed over a period of time. Of course, not one day. So where were they? If it was like we are going to kill the the the, the, the regional minister or something, you would have seen how fast they, they might have reacted. You, you understand? Sometimes it beats me. When we were younger, the, 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 the special branch, that's what we used to call them special branch, CID and special branch, they were deadly. They could filter out information. Now I don't know. What has happened? It, and the boys are even smarter. Then I would say it is the orientation you've given them. If you align them right and you give them the right matching orders, they will produce. If you align them wrong and you give them or you watch on whilst they do the wrong things, they'll keep on giving you the wrong things. And at the end of the day, you will suffer. Doc, let me ask you the same question. If our people are this good, as the both of you appear to agree, why do we not pick up these things before they happen? Uh, I, I think... In fact, there was a time when there were people in Ghana who were living in Togo and other places as refugees. Mm -hmm. Our government didn't even know. Yeah. I, I think, apart from all the security theories and security intelligence that are placed in our professionals, I think uh, uh, culture also plays a role of the people, envir the environment of where the issues are, you know, erupt. But you are security you people, know. you are trained See, to rise above exactly, the cultural exactly. limitations. But culture and the tradition here vary from place to place. And, you know, like for example, in Ghana, our culture is so much that that doesn't mean, therefore, this cannot be able to rise. But I see that these professionals are always trying to be very careful. Look at this very matter of uh, 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 what do you call it? Um, uh, Yana and those things. It, it, it has been very dicey and very, the, all that they cannot be able to overcome it. But I think with time, they are taking their time because they are respecting tradition and culture. But at the end of the day, whoever tried to push it so hard, because, and again, at the same time, political you know, concerns are also playing a role. But that shouldn't be the case as far as security matters are concerned. Captain, should security agencies, trained men and women, be constrained by what culture, culture influences and traditions and all of that? No, no. If they are trained men, they should not be constrained too much. You, you have to have your cultural intelligence. Even mm -hmm. in the security agencies, in the spying world, yeah. you have to have a high sense of cultural intelligence. Mm. You don't go there and start bastardizing the cultural no. way of doing things. You'll be ineffective. Exactly. You have to know it and manipulate or work within it. You understand? So you have to. But it should not deflect you from doing what you exactly. want. Right. Exactly. You will do it, but, but you will do it with decorum or deference or so, so that you don't, you don't offend mm -hmm. other sensibilities. Exactly. And that can distract you from your aim. Yeah. You yeah. understand? Yeah. So and, and, yes. Quite recently, a few weeks to the elections, we heard about a bomb scare in mm. Kumasi. Mm, okay. How much premium did you place on that, Captain? <laughs> Those were some of the, 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 the fears that were building up in the system before the elections. And rightfully so, we were all anxious, right? And luckily, whatever it was, was not successful. That mm. is if. That's right. But you see, it, it is, wh what have we heard since then? Maybe they were too busy for the elections, so we haven't followed up. These are some of the things. You see, in the, in the developed countries, when a major incident like this happens, the police chief, the mayor, and the, they keep on giving proactive press conferences, exactly. throwing out information there. Recently, I was in Germany for some time, and I was sitting in the hall doing nothing, and I, and I was listening to the news, and I said, ah, something struck me. I said, here in the developed world, they force feed you information. Mm. In Ghana here, you they want information, hide the information from they you. starve you with the information. Exactly. That is the difference. You have to beg for the information. Look at what is happening to our right to information yeah. belt. I mean, hello, it's, 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 it's the system. It, and in as much as the president or the leadership can't be blamed for everything, but they should set the tone. Doc, exactly. does it worry you that when the story broke, and we sent a team down there to talk to ordinary uh, citizens, residents of Kumasi. Virtually every single one of them said they didn't believe the story. Ah, see? They didn't believe that a bomb like such 
got blown up in that environment. It actually didn't blow up. We just had a report that a, um, a, bomb. a bomb had been planted near the re deputy regional minister's home, and um, the police and were invited. The regional minister granted interviews and said they picked canisters. And, and he was even proactively volunteering information that did not lie in his mouth. Exactly. To give. These information gathered up to now. Like the comments he made were not from the professionals. Okay. The comments the political master made were not from the professionals. Yeah, but Doc, I was asking mm. whether you are worried that the citizens mm. didn't believe their story. Uh, because, in fact, like we've taken from our discussion for the past, most of the time, when it's such a situation, which of course the stakeholder like the police or the concerned institutions are supposed to really be on top and be updating the community or the society, they don't. So but it has come the to case, a point. The, man, the regional minister was giving information. But Captain man, appears but to it, it has come to a point to in this country. He that. had an, he had a, he already was already a person accusing fingers. I've forgotten the minor the minor deal, but he was already appointing pointing some accusing fingers. And at that time, had the, the BNI, the security agents, the defense intelligence, the, the proper appropriate people, had they finished the investigation to That's the extent the, that he was uh, making those statements? It was supposed to have been, he waited for them to, yes. been, he'd been the last person, so that when you, he's reporting, he has the word, the full facts yes. to present to the people and not mince words. Yeah. Now, at the end of the day, the people will begin to begin distort information. And that, that will not be fine. So it, we are always in a haste yes. to you know, present, which is very you wrong see, as far as security is concerned. If you watch in the developed countries, the mayor, who is a political boss, That's right. will open the, the stage and then, and then say, okay, but the sheriff will come and say this. Exactly. But the, but the fire officer will come okay. and say But these That's are the technical people. They are on the ground and they'll get the facts. Do you understand? But if you don't, won't let them talk, then they will feed you. But then you talk. So when you talk, it's based on fact, not conjecture. Exactly. The conjecture alone can actually raise tensions exactly. even in the system. And that is very, very And then exactly. comes a situation where even if it was true, now we are living in unbelief. We don't believe it. Exactly. And you, you can kill all of us because true, true, there may be there a may, bomb and mm -hmm. we think it's a football. And so we ignore it and we rely on, on that note, we have to bring today's uh, edition of PM Express to a close. I'm most grateful, Dr. Franklin Baini. I'm most grateful, Captain Budu uh, They have brought enlightenment to the discussion. God willing, we will bring you another exciting discussion on PM Express. Until then, my name is Malik Abbas Dabu. Bye-bye.